Hello everyone, myself Dr. Jyoti Mandala. Welcome you all to the video lecture series on C programming. So we are in our lecture number 3. In our last lecture we learned about different types of programming languages. That means we learned the different ways to program a computer. We learned like we have a machine uh, level uh, programming. We can do the programming using assembly language. We can do the programming using high level language. So as part of high level language, uh, we are learning in this series C programming language. So in this lecture, let us see about a problem solving techniques. So whenever a problem is given to you, uh, what are all the approaches we need to follow to solve that problem? So those are referred as problem solving technique. So it can be uh, uh, narrated like a systematic approach to find and implement the solution to a problem. So whenever a problem is given to you, you need to follow an approach which should be a step by step procedure. And that procedure will lead to find and implement the solution to that problem so whenever you are solving the problem we need to follow some steps those steps are first we need to define the problem and we once the problem has been defined we need to analyze the problem and then we need to go to the third step of designing once everything is designed we need to start coding our problem and then we need to test whether our code is working properly or not and then we need to maintain our uh, program whatever we have developed Right. So let us learn in detail about these steps one by one. So let us start with the problem definition. Problem definition is nothing but whenever you uh, uh, you have given one problem uh, to solve the problem, your first step is to identify and define the problem. Like whenever you want to get any solution, the first step is to identify the problem and you need to define that problem correctly. Right. So the problem must be stated clearly and accurately. Clearly it should be stated like this is my problem and I want a solution to this problem. So that is called as a problem definition. So the first thing is to identify the problem and that problem should be stated clearly and precisely. So once the problem has been identified, we need to go to the problem analysis phase. And in this problem analysis phase, as in the problem definition, we have clearly mentioned what our problem is. And from that definition, we need this analysis will help us in designing, uh, designing a solution for that problem. And uh, we can go with the coding also. So in the problem analysis, we need to identify from the problem definition, what are all the input specification and what are all the output specifications. Input specification in turn is nothing but the number of inputs are required for this uh, uh, for the solution so what type of inputs we are going to wh what type of inputs are required to solve that problem so and what forms of input are also available that need to be highlighted in this input specifications and then other one is output specifications like once you have given the logic and or what sort of output you are expecting and how many number of outputs you are expecting uh, from that logic so here in the problem analysis you need to highlight the input specifications and we need to highlight the output specifications specifications now once it is done we can jump into the design phase this which is the third step of our problem solving and in the design phase once the problem has been defined clearly and you have your input specifications and output specification you can start designing a program so before going to directly design using your programming language like our C or Java or any other programming language, we need to start writing an algorithm and flowchart for a particular problem with whatever input and output specifications we have. So in this lecture, let us learn in detail about how to write down or how to design an algorithm. Right. So let us start with the algorithm designing process. So in the algorithm designing process, what actually it is nothing but is it will tell us to write down the step by step procedure for giving a solution to that problem. Like whenever, whenever you are going to give any solution to a problem, you need to write clearly the step by step procedure to getting the solution for that problem. So we can define an algorithm like a sequence of steps to solve a particular problem or an algorithm and it is an ordered set of unambiguous steps that will produce the result and it will terminate in a finite time. So, uh, so this is the definition that will be given. So whenever you are talking about an algorithm, that algorithm will possess some characteristics. So uh, everything cannot be considered as an algorithm. When an algorithm possess these, whatever we I'm going to tell you now, six characteristics, then that will be considered as a, an algorithm for your 
for the, as a solution to your problem. So the first important characteristic of an algorithm is an algorithm may or may not have an input. Input is the first characteristic. Uh, according to the requirement, uh, some uh, uh, algorithms may require an input, some algorithms may not require an input. But uh, uh, without input also sometimes your problem will be executing. Your, your solution to that problem will be executing. Next, whatever algorithms you are writing, it should possess the characteristics of finiteness. Finiteness is nothing but the algorithm should consist of finite number of steps. It is not like, a, uh, it is like the algorithm should complete after finite number of steps. Uh, you should not say like in, in infinitely it should be going on repeating the steps. It should not be like that. The algorithm should consist of finite number of steps. Next uh, characteristics is effectiveness. Effectiveness is nothing but an algorithm should start from one single entry and it should exit from a single single point. So the algorithm should consist of a single entry point and a single exit point. And the fourth characteristic is definiteness. Definiteness is nothing but the each and every step, each and every step, whatever you are going, going to write in your algorithm must be defined precisely. Precisely is nothing but the, the problem must be clear. The statement must be clear. Whatever statement you are writing in the algorithm, it should be clear. Next, readability. Readability is nothing but the step that you are writing in the algorithm must be easily understandable. It should not, you should not use a complex words like that to, while writing an algorithm. And the last characteristic that should be satisfying by an algorithm is output. So each algorithm is expected to produce at least one result. Without the output, we can't see the algorithm is correct or not. So these are all the characteristics that should be possessed by an algorithm. What are they? Input finiteness, effectiveness, definiteness, readability and output. Right? So once these characteristics are satisfied, one more thing we need to uh, uh, remember in case of algorithm is time complexity and space complexity. What do you mean by time complexity is nothing but the amount of time that is taken by your algorithm to perform the desired task. That means to get the solution to your problem, the amount of time required is measured as a time complexity. And also we have one more category, uh, one more parameter that is space complexity, which talks about the amount of space or the memory required by an algorithm for giving the solution to your problem. Remember, while solving a complex problem, it is possible to have multiple algorithms. We, ca we can't ensure like this is the only algorithm we can have for that problem. We can have multiple algorithms and for obtaining the required solution. So, if in case of having multiple algorithms, the algorithm that ensures best space complexity and best time complexity should be chosen for obtaining your desired, desired solution. Got it? In case of multiple algorithms, the algorithm which is having the best space and time complexity will be chosen for your desired solution. They plays the role of time complexity and the space complexity. Right? So, let us see some examples of uh, performing the uh, uh, performing writing the algorithm. So, whenever any task is given, the instructions that you give to your uh, uh, friend and the instructions that you give to your computer are different. It's like, let me show you with an example. Uh, let us consider an example of boiling a water in a kettle. Right? Now, if you consider this one, let us first highlight what are all the three requirements that, uh, that are required to write our algorithm. That, that means our input specification and output specifications. Our input specifications is we need a kettle and a water. And the task to be performed is to fill up the kettle and we need to boil the water. And the output uh, specification is output that is required is expected is we, we want a boiled water. Right? Now, let us highlight the instructions that you are going to give to your friend and the instructions are very simple when you are going to give uh, to the friend that because telling to a friend how to boil a water in a kettle is very simple you will be having some less number of steps first step maybe fill the kettle with the water and second step you will be telling like uh, place that kettle in the stove or uh, and turn on the burn burner and once the starts once the water starts boiling turn off the burner turn off the burner so these are all the steps you will be telling to the friend but whenever you want to tell uh, this task of boiling a water in the kettle to a computer the steps may be increasing 
Why? Because we need to follow those five, uh, six characteristics of the algorithm. So let us see the instruction that we are going to give to the computer for this particular task of boiling water in a kettle. So the first step is we need to always tell to the computer like start and the last step we need to tell to a computer is stop. Right? So the first step is start and second step is put the kettle under the tap. Everything should be uh, clear. Everything should be uh, like effective. Everything should be definite. Everything should be finiteness. All these properties should be satisfied while writing an algorithm to a computer. So that's why we need to tell in detail. So second step is putting the kettle under the tap. Turn on the tap. Check if the 90% of the kettle is filled. If not, repeat the above step. If it is not filled, then again you need to repeat checking the kettle is filled or not once it is filled turn off the tap and then place the kettle in the burner and then turn on the burner and check if the water is of 100 degrees celsius if not repeat the above step of uh, checking the water is 100 degrees celsius or not once it has reached that one we need to turn off the burner and finally we, we need to stop. So this is the algorithm, in detail algorithm we need to tell to perform a particular task of boiling a water in a kettle. Got it all of you? So let us take one more example of writing an algorithm to find the average number of uh, marks obtained by a student in the subject. Uh, here I am not including the instructions for the front because we are, as we are going to program on, on the computer, so let us write on the algorithms. That means instructions required to be given to the computer. That means algorithm them to satisfy this problem of finding the average of marks obtained by a student in three subjects. So let us highlight the requirements first. The first requirement is the input which requires three marks. Second one is to perform a task calculating the average and our output I expect is average of our masks. So the algorithm for this one is we need to start with the step one and in the second step we need to accept the three marks that we need to write in detail, accept the marks in three subjects, marks one, marks two, marks three and perform and uh, the average by giving the formula in the third step and in the fourth step we are displaying the average value and in the fifth step we are telling the computer to stop. So this is about the in detail about the algorithm. So these are all the key points that we are taking from this lecture. In this lecture we try to uh, learn about the problem solving techniques where uh, for performing the problem solving techniques we have highlighted these steps to be maintained, these steps to be followed. So, but in this lecture we learned about what actually problem definition is, uh, what you mean by problem analysis and under the design part we learned about an algorithm and in the le next lecture we will see about the second step of designing that is with the flow chart and then we'll start with the coding testing and maintenance okay so let us all uh, meet in our next lecture until then thank you all of you